Ohio folks in the house. Uh, there, I see my dear sister wave your hand at me. She's from Ohio. And we've got some Pittsburgh, Pittsburghians, Pittsburghers, however you say it. Great to have this precious couple here. They're uh, moved down here, relocated. So y'all do me a favor and don't run them off. Is that all right? Let's agree on that. Shake, shake. So we're glad that you, everybody's here today. Uh, I wore white because I didn't realize that it was you couldn't wear white. And then somebody said, you ain't supposed to be wearing white. I said, well, listen, when you have to, when you are broke, come on, y'all, you, and you get a good deal on a T-shirt, so I'm wearing my $4.99 shirt, just pimping ain't easy, y'all, it ain't easy, so um, thank you, brother, just, just leave that right there, be perfect. I want to show you something out of Exodus chapter 2, uh, verse number 1, there went a man out of the house of Levi and took a wife, a wife, a daughter of Levi, and the woman conceived and bare a son, and she hid him three months when she could not do this any longer. Verse 3, I'm going to paraphrase to get to where I want to be. She put him in a basket, verse 3. And verse number 5, the daughter of Pharaoh came to wash herself at the Nile River. The maidens came with her, verse 6. She opened up this basket. She saw the child. The baby was crying or weeping, as the King James says, and she had compassion on him. She said, this is a Hebrew child. Then she said to... Um, then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Do you want me to call one of the Hebrew women so they can nurse this child? The daughter said, Yes, go. And the maid went and ended up, by what she thought was a coincidence, getting Moses' mother. This is baby Moses, of course. How crazy is that? Like, well, I need one of you ladies to breastfeed a child. Oh, I'll do it. Well, perfect. You look like the mother anyway. And Pharaoh's daughter said, take this child away, nurse it, I'll pay you wages. How many get paid? Come on, somebody. Raising, some of y'all grandmas have done that, raised other people's kids and did not get paid. The woman took the child and nursed it, and it grew, and she brought it to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. They called him Moses because Mo Moses means drawn out of the water, drawn out of the water. In the next several verses, Moses has become a man. He kills an Egyptian because the Egyptian is uh, beating down his Hebrew brother. Now go to chapter 3, verse number 1 of Exodus, chapter 3, verse 1. If you're there, say, I'm there. Moses, now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God called Horeb, or Mount Sinai. Same mountain, same mountain range, same area, where Moses eventually would get the law, uh, where um, all, Elijah was in a cave of depression. Same area, same area. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the middle of a bush, and he looked, and behold, the bush was burned with fire, but it was not consumed. Now, only God can set you on fire and then add to you, not take from you. God anoints, the devil uses. The world sucks you dry, God adds to you. Moses said, I'll turn aside and see this great sight, why this bush is not burned, why it's not consumed. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God spoke out of the middle of this bush and said, Moses, Moses. If it had been a woman, he'd only had to say one word, but men don't listen. <laughs> so he said, Moses, Moses. He said, here am I. Like that candle, Lindsay. And he said, draw not here, but take off your shoes. The place you're standing on is holy ground. I am the Lord God of your father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses hid his face. He was afraid to look upon God. God said, I've seen the affliction of my people in Egypt. I've heard their cry because of these taskmasters. I know their sorrows. I've come to deliver them. Verse number 11. Moses said unto God, Who am I uh, that you would send me to Pharaoh? And how will I bring these people out? Verse 12. Here's my sermon. Surely I will be with you, and this shall be a token. Would you mind saying the word token? This shall be a token that I have sent you. This experience will be a token. This will be a token. And in verse 14, of course, the, the famous line, God said to Moses, Do you just go tell Pharaoh, I am that I am, sent you, and I'll do the rest, basically, is what he was saying. I want to talk to you this morning about tokens. Tokens. 
Um, Ralph, if you'll go to those lights, and I want you to go ahead and cut all of those lights off from me. And Devin, if you'll go to that front door and just, uh, there's lights on the wall there. If you'll turn those out for me, please, you got it lit. Thank you. When I was a teenager, um, this represented my life. So kill those lights for me, please. All of those lights, perfect. Keep going. This is what my life looked like. Only with one exception, it was darker. Now, I don't know if you can relate to this or not, but I have lived days in my life with tremendous darkness as a person, as a boy, as a man. And when I was about 17 and a half, God cut the light on in my life. That's what this candle represents. Notice the light did not fill the whole room. It it did not change everything about my life instantly. But he turned one light, one candle on in my life. And as they say, the rest is history. Now, Ralph, go to those lights, please. And when I tell you to, just cut one on at a time. So give me one strand of lights. And then about a year went by, and I was 18, 19, and then this happened. It lit up a little bit more. And then another light came on. Give me another light, Ralph. And then that happened. And give me another light. And then a few years went by, and that happened. Give me another light. And then I was about 30 years old, another light came on. When you get kids, you'll get quick. You'll get smart. And then as I approach 40, I feel like most of the lights of my life are starting to come on. I'm starting to see things the way God wanted me to intend to see them. But I want you to understand that this candle is the original light. This is what you got to come back to. It don't matter what happens in life darkness or days of glory or you're high on the mountain or low in the valley, this is what you got to come back to. The original moment that God lit the bush up in your life. Are you with me? So God gives us tokens in our life. What are these tokens? For the sake of time, I'm just going to tell you what they are. They're burning bushes. Now, how many did Moses get in his life? That's right. How many dens of lions did Daniel get? Help me preach. How many arcs did Noah get? Come on. How many chariots of fire did Elijah get, right? How many times did Peter walk on water? Come on, y'all. How many resurrections did Lazarus get? He's got one from the dead. He's getting another one later, but he's only got one so far. This don't happen every day. Now, for everybody, this works different because everybody needs and God gives Time, uh, get this opportunity rather for burning bush experiences in your life. Raise your hand if you went through a divorce and the lights went off only to come back on in your life spiritually. All right, look at that. That's you know what you call that? You don't call that hypocrites, those people were honest. You call that life. How many of you know there's grace after tragedy? If you'll find it in it, you can certainly find it after. Now, how many of you lost a significant other person, mother, mother, father, brother, sister, whomever it may be in your life, and that was a burning bush in your life? Come on, look around you, look around you. Now, these people are not hypocrites, better or worse than you are. They're living life. These are burning bushes experience. Now, how many of you had something private happen to you during either your younger days or your middle ages? It was terrible, uh, and it, and it 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 really put a hole in your soul, and it almost poisoned the the soil of your soul. Raise your hand. Look around you. That's, that's the same amount of people. Every time I'm asking this question, you get the same response. Why? Because this does not mean you have a special demon. It means that you are in a, a human being in a, an arena called life. And as long as we're in the vehicle of time, we're going to experience the highest uh, pleasure and we're going to experience the lowest lows. Look at me while, while, while you're breathing. Look at me. That doesn't make you bipolar. That makes you normal. Come on, y'all. The fact that you can survive that. Now, <clears throat> tragedy leaves a film on the bottom of the closet of your inner man. That film, like dust as I rake across my finger, that film is a gold dust. You say, what do you mean? That's best, best gun barrel residue. And if you live through that, God will take the residue of yesterday and yesteryear, and that is the cement He will use to build your life on. Raise your hand if you're, well, don't raise your hand on this one, but if you've ever been to jail, you know what I mean. 
that's a moment you either turn or you burn. In other words, you, you wake up and you say, man, this ain't the life for me. So, so you, you go through these moments in your life where you're either in physically incarcerated or you spiritually go through a prison. Now Moses' life is broken up into three seasons. The first 40, the next 40, and the last 40. Raise your hand if you've heard this scripture. Man's days at best will be 70 if he's blessed 80. He may not live. You, you've read that scripture? Man shall not live past 70 or 80. First of all, that's in the old covenant. And second of all, Moses wrote it and he lived to be 120. So he was not a math teacher. So if Moses can live to be 100, come on y'all, and God bury him, you can live out all the days God has promised you. You don't have to die at 60 as a diabetic. I'm going to preach now. You don't got to die at 70 as a cripple. You can live out all the days that God paid through the blood of Jesus. The blood was the ink on the check that signed for you to live and not die. So somebody says, well, you know, do you not believe in old age? I believe in old age. I just don't subscribe to it. So therefore, I believe in the New Testament blood of Jesus, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23 says now may the God of peace make you complete your whole spirit soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord you don't have to die wrong you can die strong matter of fact you don't got to die at all you can pass is that all right so therefore this man's life is broken up into three seasons am I doing all right so far three seasons 40 40 40 40 in Egypt where he goes from being an abandoned child in a basket to being that one of the highest uh, uh, political figures of the land. Then 40 he moves, runs for his life to Midian, the deserts around Sinai, and he works for his father-in-law, which is tough to work for family. Don't look at me while I'm preaching good. Say amen. Tough to work for family. So he works for his dad-in-law, and he's a shepherd. So he comes from Egypt being a big shot to being a lowly shepherd. Now God will never use you if you don't got the smell of people on you. God will never use you if you don't know how to lower yourself to the lowest of low so you can reach the highest of high. Can I get a witness right there? Now, so he goes from being a prince of Egypt to being a shepherd in the wilderness to being a deliverer of the nation of Israel. 40, 40, and 40. That is his life collectively, collectively right there. Now, what I just read to you is in the middle of the first, uh, or the middle of, of his life. Really, it's in the middle of, of his life because he's he's been in Egypt 40 years. He's become a, a, dic, uh, a big dictator there. He's become a big shot there. Now he's working for his father-in-law. Stay with me. And now he's on the backside of the desert and God's teaching him about teamwork. See, if you really want to learn teamwork, get a job because you'll learn how to be faithful with people you don't like. You learn how to keep commitment when you want to run. That's what a job teaches you. You learn how to pray. You learn how to do those things. So, so he's got a job, and he's on the backside of the desert. Now, is that coincidence that the Bible puts that there? Come on, y'all. No way. He leads the sheep by accident, no way, to the backside of the desert. Now, I really wanted to have, instead of a candle, I wanted a bush in a, in a plant. But you can't get no fresh ones at Walmart this time of year. Let me preach, y'all. That is sales. It's marketing for some reason. They say a season's changing. I don't know. So anyway, I wanted to bring a bush and take that bush and show you the bush in the pot. Now that bush is not going to give you the fruit you want in that pot. It's going to have to be taken out of that pot, help me, and put in the ground. And it's going, you're going to have to leave that bush alone. And you're going to have to fertilize that bush. Somebody said, that farmer grew a thousand pounds of corn. That farmer ain't never grew any corn. If God don't send the rain and the sun, there won't be any corn. That farmer put a seed in the ground, and he plucked the earth up, and he turned it over, and he put the seed in. But God grew the corn. So, so brother, brother Pastor Uncle Moses is about to get pulled, pulled out of a flower pot and he's about to get planted in a field don't that sound good and when God's pulling you out of a flower pot and putting you in a field it stretches it hurts oh my God we had a baby I'm having to wake up three or four times a night well you, come on somebody it's the truth it's called parenting welcome to the real world my God I got a job and I got to be there at 7 a.m. it's called life welcome to life right so God's pulling him out of a flower pot and putting him in a field and you know what God's going to do 
God's going to set up a, a, an impassable situation where he's going to give him something that disturbs him. He walks over to the side of the crevice of the rock and there in front of him is a bush engulfed with this fire-like scene and it's not being consumed. Now God's the only one that can light you up without tearing you up. The devil will light you up and you need a BC powder the next morning. I'm going to preach this morning. Whether you help me or not, God's the only one that can fill you up and bubble you over in your life and give you something that doesn't leave a sour taste in your mouth. But the devil will give you something sweet that will turn your stomach sour and you'll regret every second you got involved in that situation. God will set you on fire and put something in you you didn't know you had. If you want your marriage on fire, if you want your money on fire, if you want your heart on fire, you got to take off your shoes and draw near unto God and he will draw near unto you. You got to make the most of every burning bush God gives you. When God says worship, you got to worship. When God says move, you got to move because you won't get many of these bushes. When you get them, use them. You're supposed to be all, get all, and give all at every stop of the road. God don't want you missing a moment at all. He says, Moses, take your shoes off. I love a church that I can take my shoes off in. Hello. I love a presence of God where I don't have to pray a perfect prayer. I don't have to know what the future holds. I even love the fact that in faith, you don't even have to have all the answers about today or tomorrow. There's a part of my faith, I don't have a clue what's going to happen in my life tomorrow. But I know who's going to hold my tomorrow. So a part of my faith is blind, and yet I see. But that's the faith God calls me to. I don't know how that bush is on fire, but it's not being consumed. But I'm going to live off the warmth of that fire that experience until God tells me to shift is this okay today has to be I'm not changing sermons now and the Lord says this emphatic statement to him Moses check this is the meat of the, the sandwich right, Moses Moses He's afraid. He don't know whether to run to or from him. We have a dog at our house. I can walk in the kitchen and I can open a pretzel bag and I can eat a pretzel. When the dog hears the wrapping of the pretzel bag, he can be feet up, unconscious on the floor, but he will walk in the direction of his master. He don't know if I'm moving for him or against him, but when I move, he moves. He don't know if I got a blessing or a beating waiting, but he moves when the master moves. And if we were to respond like that, come on, y'all, we would get more crumbs from the table. We would get the fresh loaves of heaven if we would move when the master moves. God's got bread in his hand if you'll move when the master moves. Hey, Lindsay, I'm doing okay today. This is my favorite part of this teaching. Moses, Moses, Take your shoes off. Okay, strange. For what? Bizarre. He's, he, he's bugging out. He's high and he hasn't smoked anything. He don't know what's going on. He just ran up on what seems to be an, the, a strange angelic presence, right? This fire that's burning. Let me stop and throw this in here just, just for, for recreational purposes. If anybody in the world ought to have the fire and the passion of life, it ought to be Bible Christians. There's no way around sad, mad, never been glad Christianity. In fact, I, I, I can't deal with it long. Can anybody else? This dead, you know, fireless. I don't want the bush without the fire. And out of the bush came a voice. And the voice said, tell them I am that I am. Watch this. Out of another bush called the cross, come on y'all, is another voice that says, I still am that I am, and I still can bring slaves out of Egypt. See the parallel there? But here's the meat of the sandwich is simply this. Moses, Moses, you ready? This shall be a token for you. That when you go back to Egypt, put verse 12 on the screen of chapter 3 for me guys. This, you will serve me upon this mountain. When you see this verse, it's going to make total sense to you. So while I'm waiting on the verse, look this way. Look this way. He's been 40 years in Egypt. 
He's been 40 years a shepherd, and what is he about to do? He's about to use those skills God has taught him to go back into Egypt and deliver a group of people called the Hebrew people. Is that right? And right in the middle of that, God says, Hey, I know you're 40. I know you're 60. I know you're 80. But it's not too late and quit whining and get up and move. I know you're 28 and think you've lived and you've been through some tragedy. I know you're 35 and you don't feel like you can have a relationship because something happened to you sexually or mentally. But hang on a second. God's about to give you a miracle that's not a method. It's a miracle. And God's going to send you a token. Everybody say token. These are tokens. Now let me tell you the difference. Most men, when they want a sign from God about their marriage, it usually involves their wife being much more passionate than they are. I would she'd get it together and t- uh, she, uh, she needs to know what I need and know what I want. Well, if you want her to be on fire, you need to take your shoes off and move in the direction of the fire. You don't need to, I'm preaching good now, whether it's quiet or not. You don't need to let her go by herself. You need to lead her in the fire. Let me get off that subject. God says, this will be a token. God gives tokens. I love it. In uh, 2004 or 5, we just got married. In 2004, we got married in June. Barry, what month did your dad pass away? January of 2004. Six months later, I was married. We were driving a little while after our honeymoon, didn't have any kids, had a lot of money. $100 $100 bill was a lot of money. Can I get a witness? No kids in the back seat. Oh, the glory days. We were driving along, and it was Monday, which is the preacher's lowest day. So on the radio was, Living on a prayer, take my hand, we'll make it, I swear. And it was sure enough true. We were living on Dollar General saltines, y'all. Give me a witness. We were on hamburger helper, no hamburger, only helper. (laughs) Raymond noodles, chicken flavored rock is what I call it. And so we were, we didn't have, but we were preaching all over and we drove through Savannah and I stopped the car and my wife said, what's wrong? I said, I think God just spoke to me. She said, in the middle of a Bon Jovi song? I said, come on sister, get with the program here. We're driving along and I said, Something just told me one day we're going to be in this area some way, somehow, or connected, or maybe even do a ministry in this area. It's weird. She goes, are you serious? I said, yeah. She goes, well, okay. I did not realize, come on, y'all. I did not realize that seven years later, come on, somebody. Whenever a a situation rose up that the doors, like Bryant was preaching about earlier, the doors slammed in our life, God opened another and said, now go plant your church. You know what I told God? I said, I'm 28 years old. Give me a sign. And you know what my mind did? It went back to driving a car right down from Hardyville all the way to Hilton Head and back. And I heard in my mind, I heard the voice of the Lord. Y'all know what it was singing? She said, we got to hold on. I heard that. I I saw the moment in my mind. Why? Because God sends tokens. God drops hints. And God gives clues about what he's going to do for your life. But if you miss the clue, you'll miss the assignment. And if you take the wrong turn now, you'll be on the wrong road later. A voice spoke from the, the... the bush and he said Moses this will be a token and as we move in faith God sends tokens aren't you glad of that I said God sends tokens the burning bush was a token from God but this is where it gets fun God said Moses this shall be a token unto you and you ready for this he said Moses You're coming back to where your toes are standing right now. Because God always brings you full. Now you're with me. Always. God always brings you back. Come on, full. Watch this. 
He's standing in a bush. It's on fire. God speaks to him about a crisis. Watch. And he looks back across the horizon and he can see the plains of a place that he's on the most wanted list. And he, he can turn around and he, on the other horizon, he can see a land that God is about to give to his children and his descendants. And God will send you a token right in the middle of where you have been whoo, and where you are going. And the token is that you won't forget where you've been and thus you won't not know where you're going. And the man that is lost, confused, and delusional is not the man who doesn't know where he's going. It's the man who has forgot where he has come from. And Moses is going to have to walk back into Egypt and God is sent him but God's given him a token that he's going back but he's coming back to this mountain and when he gets back to this mountain he's going to have a group of people behind him that have been set free from bondage and God's going to show up on the top of that mountain in fullness of his glory and he's going to set a nation free and that's where he's going to declare a land given unto them it's all in God's circle that's why they make you put this on when you make a covenant with somebody. I can't start over. I can't, I, I've done so much. Well, the son does it every day. <laughs> the moon does it every night. I'm standing on the beach. And my, one of my sons says, look, Daddy, the tide was out a mile. And my, my boy said, look, Daddy, there's less water in the ocean. <laughs> God will send you a token. Call it a wake-up call if you want. I call it Tokens. I was 16 years old. I was in a truck. I had a wreck. I woke up on the highway. You could have stuck your finger in the back of my head. It got real soft, mushy. It almost, it just totally messed me up. I got a gash on the side of my leg. And I looked up at the stars. And I heard a voice. And it said, have I got your attention now? <laughs> Yea, I say unto thee. <laughs> How many can relate? If thou gettest me out of this, come on, help me preach. I will never. Come on, y'all. Have you been there? That's a token. You better put it in your pocket. That's a token. God gives us tokens of what lies ahead. So we can move in full faith. Crazy question here. <laughs> Crazy question. Have you ever had a deja vu moment and felt weird about it and felt like it wasn't just New Orleans conspiracy down on River Street voodoo? I walked in a church one time and the pastor said, yeah, we're so excited to have you, brother, preaching a revival. And I walked in and I went, oh my God. He said, what's wrong? I said, I've dreamed about this church. I've been in this church. He said, when? I said, when I was a kid. He said, what do you mean? I said, he said, you live, didn't you live in Mississippi? I said, yes, but I've dreamed about this church. Tokens tokens six months before I got we got married I was preaching and a guy walked up to me and he said the Lord told me to tell you something I was waiting on this deep 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 word from God y'all know what he said to me he said the Lord told me to tell you he that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord I thought okay Praise the Lord. Three weeks later, 
I had a dream. And I saw a silhouette of my wife. I said, hello. (laughs) When I met my wife, literally, that silhouette came back in my mind. Tokens. Some of you right now can hear a certain country song. I'm going to preach now. And it'll choke you up about the one that got away. (laughs) Sure do miss her. (laughs) Look at me while you act a fool. No, you don't miss her. Come on. You would have never got the one God wanted you to have had you cashed that other token. God sends tokens. When God gives you a burning bush, are you still with me? When God gives you a burning bush, take it. How many of you have been bound your back in a hospital bed and God started talking to you? When God sends that to you, take it. When God sends you a stop sign, don't floor it. Take the stop sign. A college professor was teaching one day in her class, and she asked her students to compose the perfect sentence. The class spent sessions brainstorming about their assignment. This would be their final grade of the year to declare a presentation that presented the perfect sentence. Such subjects as family, God, sex, Fame were numerous. Adjectives like passionate, full, essential, empty, awesome all rose to the top. Then the professor told the class she was going to go ahead and give everybody a passing grade because the perfect sentence was not found in the human heart. It was found in the heart of the Bible. She said, ladies and gentlemen, the perfect sentence is found in Exodus 3. It is when Moses said unto God, Who shall I say sent me? The perfect sentence was when God said these words, I am that I am. When Moses stood at that bush, she said, he was looking into his future. He was looking into his past and he was standing in the very present moment. And God was saying this to Moses. I am he that is distinct from all others. The only true God who really is the eternal self-existent immutable being. I'm the only one that can say I will always be what I have always been. I will be in your tomorrow. I will be in your yesteryear. And I'll redeem you in your present. I'm serving a God that can reach into yesteryear a thousand millennia behind me and take the bloodline of your family and reverse every curse and plant you in the moment and give you grace for tomorrow because he's a God of every season. He said, I am who I am. Let's shout about this. God's in our present moment. He's in our darkest yesterday. And he's in our brightest tomorrow. That's what I am. That I am literally means. This is a good sermon. By the way, this is chapter 12. You need a burning bush. You need a burning bush. I got you, hold on. I didn't build this roller coaster, but I oil it so I know the next loop. Stay on the coaster. This is how some of y'all looking for a sign from God. And your sign from God today has got a black jacket on holding a white candle. But that ain't a sign from God. You ever heard somebody preach a sermon? And it was good, and you ate off, you ate all the fish off that bone, spit out the bone, you ate all the meat off that 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 back strap, and you left the rest of it. And it was good. How many of you can rem- I can remember right standing here right now, messages I've heard preachers preach 
that had, was not a message. It was absolutely the audible voice of God talking to me. How many can relate to that? It doesn't happen every day, does it? It doesn't happen a lot. But there have been times in my life, literally, where God, and it may not, wait, hold on, it may not even be a pop culture trendy sermon. I ain't talking about a sermon clip. I'm talking about when God gives you a clue. When he gives you a token through the word somebody's preaching. I went down to Brownsville and I was sitting there. I turned around and I saw Lindsay. And immediately the Lord said to me, He that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. So I was so nervous. Help me, y'all. I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't know what to say. So I went up to her and I said, Hey. Do you have a boyfriend? I'm on first base and y'all ain't bunting. Swing with me here. Let's go together, y'all. And she had a boyfriend. But she broke up with him. Oh, come on. Because God has sent me a token. <laughs> Woo! There was an old written check, like a check you write. I ain't going to tell that joke. Never mind. God gave me a token. God said to me, it's about to come down the barrel. I had dated three girls that were waiting on a ring, and I just couldn't get a clearance in my soul or my eye. Have you ever almost messed up thinking you was doing the right thing? Forget marriage, anything. Come on. Almost bought a, bought a car. You bought the car, now you're drinking lemonade. And all the while, God said, don't buy that car. Some of you fellas, you bought a boat and you can't keep that thing on the water because God told you don't buy that thing. Some of you ladies, Lord's going to help me with my financial problems. I swear he is. And steadily hitting that card. Don't hit that card and then pray for crop failure. It's quiet. <laughs> In the night seasons of our life, that's when we fail to stop long enough to get God's perspective. <laughs> Moses, yes, Lord, you're coming back to this mountain. You're coming back to this mountain. In 2004, God said to me, you're coming back to this place. I thought, where? God said, you're coming back to this place. You will live in this place. God gave me the marching orders in 2004. I didn't walk in those marching orders till 2010. God sends tokens for our life. I want to close with this thought. Here he is at a burning bush. Have you ever been in this season right here? He's at a burning bush and he doesn't know whether to run to God or from God. He don't know whether to run to Egypt, back to the, back to the sheepfold, or he don't know where to go. God sends direction through tokens. Raise your hand if you know what I mean when I say tokens that God has sent you. To do. Not to do. Go here, go there. Sitting in a biology class in college. Sitting in a biology class. Don't get me a degree. I'm going to be a school teacher. Can't y'all see that working? I'm going to be a school. I'm going to get in the elementary school. I'm going to be a good school teacher. And I said, I'm sitting there. And the Lord spoke to me. At least I thought he did. And he said, you, you, this, is, this is not for you. I, I've got a call on you. We're going to do this the most unorthodox way. You know what? I said, God, I can't do this without an education. God said, I'm going to give you an education. 
I walked out. I said, God, give me a sign. There was a note folded up on the glass uh, uh, windshield of my car, literally from an unknown that literally read, there's something on your life. I don't know what it is. It's almost like when I look at you, I get just this conviction. I was a kind of, no, I'm looking around in a parking lot, tokens from God. In 2010, praying about where I was going to plant a church, I was in a super Kroger. Instead of eight aisles, they got 50 aisles. Walking down an aisle, a woman walks up to me in a, in a town 300 miles from where anybody would know me. And the woman said to me, you're a preacher and God's called you to do something. And, and I don't remember all she said, turned and walked away. It messed me up so, it scared me so bad. Can I get a witness? I'm sorry, I'm looking around at the cameras like, God, I ain't doing anything wrong, am I? You ever been there? I searched that whole Kroger store over. I ain't found that woman yet. God sends tokens. Come on, somebody. The Bible said we have un entertained angels unaware. God sends you, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. God sends you moments. Some of you women went to that conference. It wasn't so you can have a burning bush every day. It was so God could light you up so he could lead you on. You're not meant to come back and settle down, put your shoes back on your feet and go back to normal life. You're meant to walk in the glow of the glory that God gave you there. When God sends you a lit burning bush, take it. Because when the lights go out, you sure are going to need it. That's when it carries you. Because you're going to go through dark seasons. See, the next time that Moses came to this mountain, he knew what was up. <laughs> this is my sermon. I preach it like I want to. Can you imagine, oh Moses? Y'all settle down, now settle down. This will preach right here. I've been here before. 55 and older, raise your hand. You've been there before. Don't y'all get tickled at younger folk. <laughs> Gonna starve to death, youngins. There ain't no way you can starve if you know how to pray. I'm gonna preach till you shout. There ain't no way you can starve if you know how to pray. Listen, knowing how to pray and not asking God to supply is like starving to death on aisle nine of Kroger. You got food all around you, but you won't pray. You won't ask, you won't knock, and you won't seek. God will send you a job, and you won't pack a bologna sandwich. God will send you a mate, but you want the mate to knock on your front door in the middle of the night on a white horse and fall off like hero style. Don't you know you find water at a well? Don't you know you find water in a well? Don't you know you don't find gold on a sidewalk? If you want gold, you got to dig. God will turn the lights on for you. He'll shine it bright. Think of the tokens in your life. <laughs> this is a true story. When we moved here, I cracked my own self up. <laughs> I went to the bank, and there was a building on 170, a little bitty building. And it was bank-owned because it had went into either foreclosure or repo, or I don't remember what had happened to it. Y'all know what? I went in. I can call his name. I went in and talked to the banker. I know you'd, you'd probably know him. He's in Bluffton. and Y'all know what he did? He went, hmm. I thought, is that a no? Every day now on my way to and from this church, I pass by that little building. And I say, I'm, and it's still empty. And I say, Lord, thank you for sending me a token that said, nope. Thank you for slamming that door so you could open that hallway up. See, God took Moses out of that little flower pot and put him in a field. But right before he did it, he lit up that bush up and said, Hey, I'm going to throw you a token out here. I got this propane bush. Help me, y'all. 
I got this natural gas bush I'm going to light up and scare you into worship. I'm going to put you, take your shoes off. Because this is what kind of ground? Mm. But it was not holy because Moses was standing there. It was holy because God was standing there. And wherever God stands, it's holy. You can be going through hell, but if the presence of God is there, you're in holy territory. That's why, listen, that's why um, weapons may be formed against you. Isn't that the Bible? Weapon, no weapon formed against me. Here's what we think, oh, that, they ain't even going to form that. No, they forming it. No, they throwing it. You're going to hear shots fired. But no weapon formed against you will prosper. That's how that really applies to us. Now, do this, do this favor for, for me. Raise your hand if God has sent you some burning bushes in the last couple of years of your life. Come on, and you can recognize them. Last 20 years or so, they're, they're easy to spot. They draw you unto God, and they tell you, get comfortable. Get comfortable in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, how many of you, you'd categorize yourself maybe as being in a burning bush season? Come on, raise your hand. Where God's sending you some signs and some tokens of what He's doing in your life. I want to say unto you, hold on. Live off the warmth of that lamp and hold on. God's got signs for you. God's got tokens for you. Josh, raise your hand. This is my buddy Josh. Josh just came through a pretty low spot in his life. Stretch hands towards him in Jesus' mighty name. Father, you know the plans you've had for Joshua since the foundation of the world. Brian, I want you to come stand behind him. Matt, go stand beside him. And Lord, I send two burning bushes, Brian and Matt, to him right now. And I ask you, Lord, send him clues and signs and tokens of the next several weeks and months of his life. You've just put him in a place where, Lord, he got more wisdom in six months than he would have got six years in other spots. But let him get all, be all, and give all he can at this spot of the road of his life. No uh, no evil shall befall him and no plague come near his dwelling. I pray for a burning bush experience in his life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody look this way. Uh, Deanna, your friend there. What's, what's your name, buddy? I'm not going to embarrass you. Tell me your name. Robbie, I'm glad you're here today, Robbie. Is everybody glad to see Robbie today? Yeah. Robbie's like, oh my God, oh my God, leave me alone. Robbie, I just want to pray with you real quick. Is that okay, buddy? God bless Robbie going and coming. Bless him with whatever he needs. Let him know, God, that he is yours and you are his. Father, just draw near unto Robbie. Give him clarity and direction. If he's in a burning bush season, speak to him, Lord. You love Robbie. You sent your only son to die for Robbie and, 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 and the rest of the world. But, Lord, bless Robbie today. Bless him from head to feet. Give him clarity of mind, peace in his heart. I rebuke all anxiety, fear, or any panic or worry in his life life and I call forth a token for his life in Jesus name everybody say amen. amen Maria is that right Maria raise your hand Maria father I pray for Maria today whatever she's battling relationally whether she's married or not I don't know God but I'm praying for relationships I'm praying for money for her children you know what she needs today God send her burning bushes tokens clues to the, she may not have the whole picture figured out but give her an exit sign show her the plan and the direction to take for her life we come in covenant with Maria in prayer in Jesus name Amen. Isn't this okay today? Yeah. Well, Pastor, what are you doing? I'm having church. Well, you going to have it with me or not? I ain't come, going home empty. How about y'all? Father, I pray over Brandon and Mary's soon-to-be-born uh, daughter. I pray It's a girl, right? 
I said, girl, Father, I pray for this, this precious uh, lily, I believe, God, that's going to be born, Lord, into this earth. I, I, I speak health over that child. Lord, let that child be a, a candlestick in this dark world. Protect that child, Lord, even now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, Amelia's mom. Amelia, mom. Shelly. I was going to say Sherry. I was close. Oh, Sherry. Um, Shelly, right? Shelly, I feel so strong to tell you, you have been sort of in like this, uh, not a midlife crisis, but just a season where it feels like you're in the middle between the desert and the promised land. And it's like, I don't know whether to run back to the desert and just settle or to run to the promised land. And I believe the grace of God is going to give you direction today. And Stretch your hands towards Shelly. God, give her direction, clarity of thought, and quality of mind. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. What's your name, brother? Travis? Travis. Um, Miss Linda told me y'all married. I didn't even know that. Well, congratulations. Where are you from? I am too, brother. I'm, you're my friend already. <laughs> We're born in the same mud. Uh, I want to pray about your future and your direction and what, 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 whatever plans that God has put in your heart. Hey, I'm, I'm hoping to accomplish this. Uh, I just want to pray over you. Is that okay? Father, in Jesus' name, over Travis. To Travis, right? Travis, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, make the plan clear, make it concise. Just drop him those tokens in front of his road, oh God. Give him peace in the area of finances. Give him, give him marital peace. Give his mind clarity, Lord. Just lead him distinctively. Lord, let it be like trumpets in his future blaring. This is the way, this is the way, this is the way. And I bless him in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, if you're in this room, I want to close like this, and you feel like God has sent you or is sending you or you need a burning bush in this season, stand up on your feet with me if that's you. Come on, should be people standing all over this room. You're in a season where you need God to light up some areas and show you the way to take. Stand with me if you will. God can do it, can He? He just did it for Bryant, about to open a business, and God said, nope, hold up, hang on, stop. Don't do it. Amen? He can do it for him. He can do it for you. So God, if we're on our feet today, I want us to lift our hands unto you, Father. And Lord, I'm asking in full faith believing woo, for burning bushes to happen this week in people's lives. Tokens, reminders of the promises you have made to your people. Now Lord, we're not illegitimate today. We're not strangers, nor are we grandchildren. We're no stepchildren today. We're children of God if we've been saved by through the name of Jesus. We're children of God. And this week shall be marching orders, tokens. Whoa, stir up your faith with me, y'all. Come on, stir up your faith with me. Right now, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, send your people tokens that you're coming back to this spot. <laughs> That's right. You're coming back to this mountain, but when you come back, you won't be in shepherd mode. You'll be in deliverance mode. So, Lord, I'm asking you as the shepherd of this house, send these, these children of yours, send them burning bushes. Send them a token for the good. Lord, throw us a token our way. Throw us a piece of bread. Throw us a loaf. Throw us a glass of milk and water and meat this week. If you receive that token, say, I receive. Now look at Pastor Eric. If you receive it, I want you to believe it. How many of you, how many of you, Monday to Saturday this week, you're going to be looking for a token? I'm looking for it. How about you? I said, I, I'm, I'm telling you, this is how I have lived. Last week, Bryant, Bryant said it all, but I want to throw something in there. It was everything in me. Everything in me to walk into this church last week and say, well, um, you know, we need about 10 grand to catch up. And God said, you quit doubting me. Come on, somebody. And you shared this burden with these people and watch me work. If you attend this church and you don't think that last week was a token, 
you don't belong to this church. For a church that run, we had, we had 80 people here last week. 80 people, y'all, in this sanctuary. 80, 90 roughly people. And God used the milk and the meat of this church, you and I as a team, and we caught us right back up to speed. That's a, that, listen, that's a token from God. The next mountain we face, we say, oh, we remember you. Come on. We've been here before, and you're, that's no hill for a climber. See, the bruises and the scars of your past lead you to the glory of your future. I fought a lion, fought a bear, and this uncircumcised giant needs to fall. Hey, I had no idea in January of 2004 that the pastor of this facility that was Abundant Life went home to be with heaven. But God did. God did. And cruising through here, God stopped and said to me, you're coming back to this spot, didn't he, honey? In fact, I, we know the very spot we were at. And God said, you're coming back to this area. We didn't even know. Plan a church. We just got married. And God stopped us in a Pontiac Grand Prix and said, this is the place. We went back home. We didn't think nothing of it. God sent us a token, didn't he? This is the place. This is the place. Kneeling on my knees in my living room, I said, God, what do you want me to do now? And literally God said, you remember that place you were years ago? And I told you you'd be back there. I said, I do. And God said, go plant a church there. Go plant a church there. I'm moving stuff into place. Go put plant a church there. Woo! A token. A token. A token. A token. God send tokens to your people this week in the name of Jesus. Say this prayer with me. Declare it with everything that you've got in you. I want you to say it like you mean it. Say, I am whole. I am healed. And I am prosperous. In Jesus' name. Love on somebody as you're dismissed. Yeah.